as I look in this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I think of a book that I just finished reading that I read this week called Ethics in a Permissive Society. It's a book by his Bar William Barclay, written in the 70s, and it's pretty much just as true now as it was then. And in his last chapter, People to People Ethics, he starts out his chapter saying, I wanted to start this talk saying, no other generation has been as bad as this generation. But then I realized that's wrong. We're just as bad as the other generation. For him, he went back to the first century, to the time that Paul was living in. To the time of the Greek philosophers. To the time of polytheism, of many gods. To the time of Paul setting out a different way to live. That's where he took his example. Things in the 70s were just as bad, if not worse, back in the first century. And in Paul's case, he may very well have thought, things could have been worse than now. But, all he had to do was go back and look at the book of Exodus. And he knew that wasn't true either. And here's the thing. The thing that he was dealing with, and the thing that, that William Barclay deals with, the thing that we deal with is, is that people oftentimes will take a miracle or take a wonderful thing, a sacrament, the sacraments of baptism and communion, and they will take it and say, now I have freedom to do whatever I want. Now that I have cleansed myself momentarily, now I can do whatever. For the people of Israel, it was literally crossing through the sea on dry land. It was being led in the desert by a cloud and by a pillar. And you know how long it took them to indulge after Moses went up onto the mountain. It didn't take them very long. That's what Paul's dealing with as well. The people come to the service and then they go out to the temples. They indulge in idolatry and sexual immorality at the same time. Because that's what the temples were like back then. The people of Israel had God with them. The people of Israel went through this amazing 40 years of having manna provided, of having quail provided. They also had this 40 years of having to wander in the desert because they already messed up once. Saying, no, we can't do it. There be giants. And then God says, you're going to walk for 40 years now. And they say, okay, we'll do it. And then a whole bunch of them get killed. Because they're not following what God is telling them to do. The thing is, is that many of us do get these spiritual highs. These mountaintop experiences, whether it be on a weekend, whether it be at some conference somewhere, or whether it just be driving down the road and seeing a glorious sunset and wondering, how wonderful of God who created that. Going through the mountains in God's creation. And at those times we can say, there's no way that I would ever. I will never. It will never happen to me. I will never mess up. When you're at that spiritual mountaintop, we think that, don't we? That we're not going to mess up. That life is going to be easy. That we have God on our side until life won't be hard. The Corinthians know that's not true. Paul knew that was not true. But we do know that we have a great God who is with us. We do know that God continues to be with us. As I think about this, these wonderful things that happen, I think back to a show from when I was a teenager we starred a character, Al Bundy, and on that show, he kept going back to saying, I scored six touchdowns in one football game. At the point, he was 
a shoe salesman and we thought he was the worst person in the world. But he could have been. And he keeps going back to that time. I could have been. I scored six touchdowns for the people of Israel. We went through the desert. For some of us, it's, I've done my time. I've done this. It was great. But we can't rest on it. Just like Paul, several, at another place in the book where he talks about things that happened to him, but he's not resting on that. He's saying that's not necessary for today. That is not necessary for me today. I have to live today. I can't live in yesterday. That's not something we could, could do. We can't live in yesterday and we can't live in tomorrow. We have to live today. One of the things I was thinking when I was at the ball game on Monday was there was this girl who was sitting just a row next to me and she was sitting during the whole game texting. And the only thing I could think of that was, way to be where you're not. Way to be where you're not. That's what she was trying to do. And the thing that happens when you do that is you never are where you are. And if you're resting on your laurels in the past, or just looking into the future, you'll never be where you are either. And you are going to miss life. Life will just pass you by. And when we rest on our laurels, and we let life pass us by, what happens when you're not looking? Because you're going to trip up. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. And Paul says to stand firm, to guard against that. Because even the Israelites, who were with God in the desert, who was led by fire, and led by cloud, they messed up too. And they messed up in three specific ways. Three specific ways that the Corinthians did as well. First was idolatry. They committed idolatry to such a point that the very thing, the very thing that God told Moses to make for them was something that they bowed down and worshipped once they got to the promised land. So that snake on a pole, they bowed down and worshipped to it to such a point that he had to destroy it. The thing that originally was for God's glory was something that they worshipped as an idol. And we can't do that. We can't take a thing that is for God's glory and turn it into something else. Idolatry is not simply just a statue that someone makes. It can be anything. It can be our job. It can be a building. It can be another person. The joke I used to like, like to say that comes from Corinthians to friends is when somebody would say, oh, you're my idol. And then I would say, oh, wow. You're not, nothing at all in the world. Isn't that great? Paul says an idol is nothing at all in the world. Even though they did saw all that God did, experienced in first hand, they still worshipped other things, including the snake that Moses made. 